I speak all these words, saying, I'm the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bind unto thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless to take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day the Sabbath for the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover the neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover the neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. In the name of Christ, we give thanks. Amen. 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 Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ornament upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. In Christ's name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 After this manner, therefore, pray ye, O Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. In the name of Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 The two great commandments. And how shall I answer them? The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. There is none of the commandment greater than these. In Christ's name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Happy Feast of Purim, brothers and sisters. Happy Purim. Uh, tonight, since it's a two-day feast, we'll just go over, like, the first half, and then, like, this is a summary like last night, and then, Lord willing, Saturday, we'll finish it up. Uh, go back over it again and kind of just finish it up. But let's start at the beginning of... How Prim came about and where it all started. Let's go to Let's go to Genesis twenty five. Then we'll do the same thing, rotate the, the, the reading. Uh, Genesis 25, we'll start off with Charlie. And Genesis 25 and 20. Genesis 25 and 20? Yes. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padaram, the sister, of, the sister to the bad, the Syrian. Right. So, I know... 
you know, when we read the scriptures, we got to understand what it's talking about. It says, Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebecca to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. What does it mean when it says there's the Syrian? Jesse. Right, because people think that Laban was a Syrian. No, Bethuel. Actually, when you look at the scriptures, according to the scriptures, without getting all deep into it, what was Rebecca to Isaac, family-wise? Cousin. He considered his cousin. See. So people say, oh, oh, no, it's the Syrian, oh, it's the Syrian. Like we read last night, Nick and Nora, you know, the Syrian. And it's not talking about that. Because when you go back, they're all related. So just a little side point. Verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. So she got pregnant, right? Because we know who controls the womb. Most high. Christ, right? So, people think, you know, Esau come up with all this birth control stuff. Most high is the one that can control birth. Christ controls birth. See? Talk about safe sex. The safest sex is what? No sir. Marriage. 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 Can you have unprotected sex? Yes. Yeah. It's your wife. You got to protect yourself against somebody you're sleeping with. Ding dong. Something wrong. <laughs> See, these are terminologies that the world plays with. Unprotected sex, safe sex. What we tell you, what Esau dictates to you is what you're supposed to do. No, you can have... Safe sex with your wife. You can have unprotected. How do you think babies are born? <laughs> Esau considers unprotected sex. Right? Go ahead. Verse 22. And the, tribal, and the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So, in the womb, right? The children were doing what? That's struggling, which means that we're in there fighting. In the womb. In the womb. This is before they came out. This is before it would be discovered who was what. In the womb, before birth, they were already struggling with each other. And then she inquired her, why? What's going on? Why are these babies at each other's throat, these twins at each other's throat in the womb? What did the Lord say? And the Lord said unto her, verse 23, two nations are in thy womb. Two what? Two nations are in thy womb. See that? So whatever comes out, these would be the progenitor of what? Nations. Nations. Nations comes from where? A country? A land mass? A man. Comes from man. See? That's another game you saw play. Gender reveal right there. <laughs> right? Two nations are inside of you. See, a lot of people are blind. That's why the scriptures, you know, it's like a veil over somebody's eyes. When you actually just look at them, like, that don't even make sense. See? It says, two nations are in thy womb. Go ahead. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy body. Shall be together. Separated. Separated. Separated from what? Thy bowels. Oh, Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So, the Lord is telling her this. Why all these things are happening within 
the womb. Why is this struggle going on? The Lord, is, he, he laid it out clearly, right? The Lord had already decided this before they even came into being. Before they came into this earth, the Lord had already laid down and mapped out what this journey was going to look like moving forward. Two nations are in thy womb. Two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be what? Stronger than the other people. And the other people and the elder shall what? Serve the younger. Shall serve, shall serve, shall serve the younger. See, people want to say, well, this was talking about during David's time. You know, when David conquered all the nations and Esau he conquered Edom and Edom was his servant when you read the history Esau broke away during that time so that's not talking about during the time of David and see these are the scriptures that people run from they want to say Esau is an Arab he's the Arab he's not an Arab he might have dwelt in what they call Arabia today, but he's not an Arab. See? And then they say, well, I don't know who Esau is. I couldn't tell you. It doesn't really say. Well, we know one Edomite that's famous in the scriptures. Herod. Who? Herod. Herod. He's like, do me. That's clear. How do you, you can't even say what is what that, who's Esau? Is Herod not Dumian? Yes. They have a bust of Herod. I mean, a, <laughs> a, a, what do you call it? It's a bust, but it's like a, it's not a statue, but it, it was just his face. A sculpture. There you go. Thank you. <coughs> go ahead. Verse 24. And when her days. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Mm -hmm. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. His name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she buried him. See that? No. So it's the. Why does it describe Esau, but doesn't describe Jacob? Because it's making a distinction. It's showing that Esau came out the way it described him, mm -hmm. and Jacob came out. The way, uh, normal. Father, yeah, normal. That's what I mean, normal. Exactly. There's a distinction there. The Bible doesn't just it highlights certain things that are abnormal, or miracles, or things that you know either it's not right or it's not normal. See, abnormal. <clears throat> so we see that from the very beginning that Esau. And Jacob would all from the from the outset they were what? Arch enemies. They were arch enemies. They were always they were rivals. See. So let's go to Genesis twenty seven. Because we're getting the beginning, beginnings of Purim. Purim is just the stage that's set for something that was already In play. Let's get to the point. Uh, let's start at verse 32. Genesis 27, verse 32. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, 
thy firstborn Esau. Now we know according to the Lord's prophecy, the first would what? Serve the younger. He's supposed to serve the younger. Go ahead. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison? And brought it and brought it me. And I have eaten up all before thou camest. Before before thou camest and have blessed him, yeah, and he shall be blessed. I thought I jumped over the verse. I, <laughs> it happens. That's cool. Go ahead. Okay, verse 34. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. Mm -hmm. And he said, Thy brother came with subtility and have taken away thy blessing. Now, continue. Keep going? Yeah, keep going. And he said, in verse 36, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved the blessing for me? See that? So what is Esau doing? Isaac. There you go. He's lying. Right? Go ahead. Verse 37. Oh. What else? <clears throat> what else is he doing? First of all, he lied. Then now he's... he's that first was to lie. That was real bad because he didn't steal his birthright. Esau despised it. As you read back in the chapter 25, 33 and 34. There we go, because that's the point. Esau's lying, and the other point is that Esau didn't want the birthright to begin with. He sold it. See? But the narrative is that Jacob what? Stole it he stole it from him. He didn't steal anything. Fair exchange. You wanted the pottage? He wanted the birthright. They swapped. They came to an agreement. They came to an agreement. He didn't do him out of anything. He might have outsmarted him. <laughs> Another way to look at it is Jacob was smarter than his brother. He was smarter than who else? Who else did he outsmart? Jacob outsmarted Isaac. Yeah, he was able to, he was able to give him a blessing. Mm -hmm. He fed him, took the stuff. Him. His mother had that. Who did he? Uh, who else did he outsmart? Laban. Laban. And what did Laban say? Same thing Esau said. You took all my stuff, and you took my two daughters. No, he outsmarted him. Because like Esau, Laban was what? Covetous. It was covetous. It's corrupt. See, that's what it, a certain plant. Small just matter where he was able to outsmart these guys. He didn't steal anything from them. And thank God he got the birthright. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> and another thing coming off of um, Genesis 25 specifically, we understand that this is what you would consider destiny. Yeah. This was prophesied. So we're seeing how the Lord moves things to fulfill prophecy. And Esau was fully in the loop on what immortality is, as carnal is, but he's carnal as a quarter. But he's fully aware of immortality, even in today's time, which is why he tries to mimic it. Right. In today's time. Because Esau knows what he knew. Everybody, first of all, you'd be crazy to give up the birthright because yeah. everything came with it. Just by birth, 
everything that was all the inheritance was attached to it. So it shows you he just did he, he could care less about it. See. So read that verse again, verse thirty six. Genesis chapter twenty seven, verse thirty six. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Have thou, have thou not reserved a blessing for me? 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn and with wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? Going? Yeah. Verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. See? He was angry. But this was his own doing, but it was really from where? Oh, sorry. It came from the heavens. And it just, see, things happen in the heavens and it just plays out on earth. We just seeing it live and direct. But these things have already been decided long, long ago. So jump down to verse 41. 41? Mm-hmm. Genesis 27 and 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. See that? So, because of the events that happened, it caused Esau to have a hatred, a deep embedded hatred for his brother Jacob. And then it says... Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I what? Slay my brother Jacob. Did that happen? No. No. The Lord protected Jacob. Huh. How do we know it didn't happen? No. How do we know this didn't happen? Oh, you read it. Yeah, we got 12 tribes. Right. Where did Jacob die? Old age. Where? Oh. In Egypt. He died in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So that didn't take place. So what does that mean then that he had a hatred for his brother and that I will slay my brother Jacob? Because obviously when you read the the history, did Esau and Jacob meet up again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened? They reconciled. They reconciled with each other. After he left Laban, I might be getting that mixed up, but I think it's after he left Laban, they met up, he had a caravan of goods going before him, and every time Esau, when Esau met up with that caravan, boom, hit him off with gifts. Hit him off, and then when he finally met up with Jacob, he didn't kill him. Big hugs, he embraced him. These are my nephews. Wow, look at your family. Look at your, Look how the Lord's blessed you. So he didn't kill him. So this obviously has to be something future tense. And we can go to the next verse. Where is it at? Where is this hatred and everything talked about in the scriptures? No. When you read the prophet Ezekiel specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, Because we're talking about hatred. Hatred of who? Jacob. Jacob. Right. Hmm? Go back one. 32? Go 35. Ezekiel 35. We're done with Genesis 27. We're still talking. We're still talking about Perim. 
35? We're going to Ezekiel 35. We'll question. And you can start at verse 1. You tagged him in. <laughs> Ezekiel 35 and 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set the face against, uh, against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. So now, Mount Seir is a synonym for who? Uh, oh, my bad. I'm keeping silent. My bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> that food smelling good. <laughs> it's for Edom, right. for Esau. When you talk about Mount Seir, it's talking about... That was their capital city. Huh? Right, the Edomites, right? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And say unto it, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee. And I will make thee most desolate. See, the Lord was, when you read Ezekiel and these prophecies, the Lord was dealing with the nations at this time. Because who was coming? For us. But the Babylonian, you're right, the Babylonians is coming. The 70 years from but who are we dealing with in this chapter who are we dealing with in this chapter eat them man <laughs> blow the candles out <laughs> I know he got ribs maybe I must have understood the question because you said in this chapter who's coming you keep reading there reading down Christ is going to come with the Avengers when we're lost together. All right, never mind. Continue to read. Verse 4. I will lay thy city's waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, because thou hast had perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in a time of their calamity. In the time that their iniquity had an end. So what is this dealing with? What time frame is this? Dealing with the future. The cross. Christ is coming out and going to deal with evil. Read verse 5 again. Because thou hast had perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. What time frame is this dealing with? Z. Correct. That was the answer. The Lord is talking about when the Babylonians would come up, right? What will Esau do? They'll join them. They'll join them. Oh, I got it. They'll join them. And this was all throughout Israel's history. Because it says Esau had what? Perpetual hatred. A perpetual hatred. He would always, any time he could get his hands on Israel, he would do what? He would <coughs> say it again. He would destroy him. And when we look at this verse, um, in verse five, there's a past tense um, verb, which is had. <coughs> right. The the hatred is perpetual, however. So he has had a perpetual hatred. So it goes back to where we just left off in Genesis 27. However, that hatred would perpetuate itself throughout Esau's generations and throughout time. Beginning with 
look at how they uh, stayed us in the wilderness. Okay, then we come up to Babylon. We come up to Babylon, they join themselves with Babylon. Then we come back around Persian Mede captivity where we get ready to get into a perpetual man. All the way up until the <coughs> Right. Because what does perpetual mean? Forever. It's forever. It's forever. It's forever. It's forever. forever. It means never ending. It it's continuous. So like the brother just said, it, it follows all throughout what? Yeah, generations. Throughout their generations. Throughout the time and history. Throughout time and history. And the hatred will be embedded in who? Yeah, Say it again. His people. The nation. His people. His descendants. His nation. Because it wasn't Esau himself. Anytime when you read the scriptures, there came a, uh, an instance with Esau dealing with Jacob that hatred would always be perpetuated through what? His seed, his descendants, his children. See, that's why we started Genesis 25. Because Israel has to realize one thing. We have enemies. We're the only ones on the battlefield thinking it's a playground. They're taking it serious. And they've always taken it very seriously. That's why whenever they can put their thumb on Israel's neck, they do it. And the children think it's a game. And we thought it was a game. See? And they're being very serious. Vern. Yeah, and it's just, and it's, it's more than just color. You know, it ain't, it ain't, it's, this thing is spiritual. Like, this, this ain't a, you know, like a color thing, and, you know, that's, it's not a race thing. It's, it's a, this thing is spiritual. Because it perpetuates through each one of the generations. See? It's always been like that. People don't like to accept that. But you can find the scriptures. You can go through them and say, wow. I, every time we look up in the scriptures, there's always a situation where Esau is always dealing with what? Israel. In some form or fashion. See? All the way up until this day. But people will say, oh, you're preaching. Hey, see, now we can go to Esther. Esau will allow us oh you can worship you can worship God the way we tell you <coughs> see it's okay to hold hands and to praise the Lord and we are the world and praise Jesus but when you say you gonna divide up the resources <laughs> Huh? <laughs> what? What about the money? <laughs> Stop your prayer. You niggas get back in line. <laughs> That's how it is. <laughs> get back in line. See, most segregated place in the world is where? United States. Not country, segregated place. I'm kind of giving it away. The saying is the most segregated place on Sundays. The church. They're not trying to worship with you. They're not trying to praise with you. None of that. You ever notice that? Everybody can come together during the 49ers game, but in church... Thank you. Uh, you are not preaching to us. And they will let you know that. Where'd you go? Did you, do you have a doctrine of divinity from such a... Mm. 
get out of here. See, they play this game like we're all world and all this is unity and when it's all love until it gets down to the nitty gritty. When it gets down to seriousness, oh no, it's business now. And we're going to put you in your place. See, so let's start at Esther chapter one. Um, we're going to jump, we're going to kind of jump around. Esther 1 and 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over 107 and 20 provinces. That in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom which was in Shushan the palace. Mm -hmm. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the provinces being before him. See, so now we're dealing with the times of who? Persians and the Medes. So the Bible is not just a book about commandments and laws. It's a book of history. See, world history. But it's a book of world history as it pertains to Israel. Israel. That's what people miss. It's not going to talk about, well, where are the Chinese? Well, they're in here, it's just not important. They're just not. That's it, Lord. Where are the Vietnamese? They're in here, but they're just not important. The book is centered around who? Israel. Israel, God's people. That's what people don't understand. If it doesn't pertain to Israel, then it probably does not. It's not, it's, it's, it's not current. It's not important. It's not relevant. It's not relevant. Yeah. At the end of the day, it has no meaning. People can't understand. All it talks about is Israel. That's what the whole book is about. It ends speaking about who? Israel. Israel. Get the kingdom with the, our names on the gates. On the gates. So if the kingdom is for everybody, then why is only Israel's names on it? <laughs> That's like me going to the brother's house, name, address. All the males go in there, and I go in and go, well, this house is for everybody. We can all live here, right? You better get out of my house. Continue. <clears throat> when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and four score days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, both in great and small, seven days, in the court of the garden of the king's palace. So was the Persian and Medes, did they have money? Were they rich? Yes. Absolutely. Stinking. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Where, where were white Green and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. So it's a glorious feast. This was a party of all parties, right? Jump down to verse 10. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bizda, Harbana, Bigta, Abigda, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus, the king, mm -hmm. to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. Right. So he wanted to show off his woman. Right? He's drinking. He's married. Go get Vashti. Everybody, go get Vashti. Go get Vashti. I want, I want y'all to check out check my, check my woman. Check my woman. <laughs> check her out. Let me show you. Let me show you. Watch this. See what I'm working with. So watch this. Go ahead. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. 
Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Why was he upset? What question? Because she disobeyed his command and embarrassed him. Right. The king is who? The king. There you go. All powerful. In the sense of these days, the king is closest to who? God. And here is his queen. Right? We set up, obviously. She is just as much as part of the kingdom as he is. And he asks her to come on down, and she refuses. So that's a sign of embarrassment in front of who? Everybody. Everybody. Like, come on, dude. No man wants to be disrespected like that, especially the king. And normally, if it wasn't the queen, <coughs> she'd be dead. Kill her. Go ahead. Then the, then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that new law and judgment. And the next unto him was Kar, Karshina, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Mersis, Mersna, and Mimukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face and which sat the first in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to the law? Because she had not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlain. So now they're dealing with this situation. What do the nations know? What is it kind of teaching us that they, that they understand? That as a man, if you allow this behavior, being how you're of this status, it's going to trickle down to the common folk. Now we're going to have problems. Yeah, problems. And we're going to read that. <coughs> order. Right. You have to have order. You can't have dysfunction in your kingdom, especially at the, at the top. The nations understand order. See, they, when you look at the president... And his wife, when have you ever seen in a formal event the wife or the first lady, as they call her, you rarely, if ever, see her in what? Pants. She don't even wear pants. She's always dressed to the nines. They know that. Because she has to play a role. But go ahead. And Mimu Khan answered before the king and the princess, Vashti the queen have not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princesses and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Asherah. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husband in their eyes when it shall be reported. The king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Mm. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princesses which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall they arise too much contempt and wrath. It would cause dysfunction all throughout the kingdom if they were to let this thing continue or let it slide. Yep. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes that it be not altered that Vashti come no more before the king Ahasuerus and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Get rid of her. <laughs> Go ahead. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. So they have to make laws and they have, so they can reestablish what? Order. Order. He saw knows that if the house is dysfunctional and there's no order, it trickles down. It'll trickle down into the children, and then it'll trickle down into what? Community. The society at a whole will be what? Dysfunctional. Dysfunctional and be corrupt. This man knows that. See? That's why he likes Israel. You know, fornicate. Go out there and do your thing. Go out there and create 9, 10, 11, 12, 15 kids. See, he knows that. Go ahead. 
And the saying pleased the king and the princesses. And the king did according to the word of Mimukon. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, and to every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. It has to be order established in the house. Where? In the house. In the house. It has to be order established in the households. Chapter 2, verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all, the, all of his princesses and his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. See, so... When we read the history, because we're skimming, skimming through it, the king held a what? Like a beauty contest, what they were called today. Miss Persia. Miss <laughs> Persian Meads. 580 B.C., whatever. I'm name. Miss Persian Meads, see? And Esther was chosen to be queen because the Lord gave her favor. See, so Vashti had to be replaced, right? Yeah. Go ahead. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Teresh, of those which kept the door were wrought and sought to lay hand on the king Asherah. See, he was upset. So they tried to assassinate, they set up a plot to assassinate the king. Go ahead. And the king was known to Mordecai, excuse me, and the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen. And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when the inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. So now, the plot was discovered. King's life was spared from the assassination plot. And who was the one that was able to... Mordecai. Mordecai. Who is this Mordecai? Jump up. Go back. Up. Go back. We're staying in chapter 2. Uh, jump up to verse 5. Now in Sushan the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimiel, Shimei, sorry, Shimei, Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with uh, Jeconiah, the king of Judah whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away. Mm -hmm. And he brought up Adasha, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. See that? So Mordecai, we get a little background on him. Number one, we know he... He's a Benjamite, right? And he was also a part of the what? The captivity that was taken captive. Right? And Mordecai took responsibility for Hadessa, who eventually became Esther. Esther the queen, because she had become a what? Orphan. She became an orphan. See? So, let's just jump over to chapter 3. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Hmm? Yes, yeah, fine. It says, After these things did King Ahasuerus 
promote Haman, the son of Hamadius, the Agagite, Ag 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 and advanced him and set his seat above all the princesses that were with him. Right, or Agagai, however you want to pronounce it. So, now, who is Haman? Who is he? Yeah, who is he? He was like the king's right hand. I just told you. Oh. He was above the princesses. Okay, what was he? Like a general. What's aggregate? Aggregate. Huh? You might. Yeah, you need a mic. From what, what son of Esau? But he's, the, he's in a, a Gagite. He descends from what line of Esau? Well, we read it a thousand times. Amalek. Oh, yeah. He's, he descends from Amalek. Verse 2. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced him. For the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servant, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Right. How come you're not bowing down to, to, to Haman? What's going on, man? Everybody knows you've been promoted. So you're supposed to bow down to him. Go ahead. Now it came to pass when they speak, they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, they told that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand. For he had told them that he was a Jew. So think about that. This just wasn't a one-off. This thing was happening what? Every day. Every day. Like, I'm not... Hey, man. Oh, stand. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not referencing no man like that. Well, we know as we read the scriptures, Mordecai would reverence him because he only what? He only reverences the Lord. He only reverences God. See? But go ahead. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Uh oh. He was, now he's upset. Go ahead. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. So what is this showing you? Watch. It's showing us that spirit that, um, that came from Esau all the way back in Genesis is coming out. It's coming out that he wanted to kill He's so mad, he's going to kill all his people. It's a perpetual hatred. How do we know it's a perpetual hatred for Israel? He just said it, but just... Because Mordecai is a Jew. That's Jews being Israel. Right, because... It wasn't enough for him to just have hatred towards Mordecai. He wanted to kill what? Read that again, my question. It said, Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. See that? So it's not something that's just personal towards Mordecai. He said, you know what? You a what? Oh, okay. So now I'm not going to get just you, but I'm going to get all the Jews. What do they call this today? Genocide. You want to commit mass genocide. You want to exterminate, annihilate. annihilate the people of Israel. You see how that hatred that Esau had, it was perpetuated Brother brought out all throughout the generations through who? Esau. Well, yeah, we know it's Esau. But through, we said it earlier. 
the descendants. Through the descendants. He's a descendant of who? Esau. Esau. So every time he gets a chance, whenever he gets an opportunity, he's going that head that hatred is going to manifest. manifest. He's going to rear his head up. And I'm glad it happens. Because we need that reminder every now and then. Maybe I gotta go in a maybe I gotta go in a grocery store in Buffalo and knock ten of y'all down. And write nigga on the gun. Maybe I gotta go in the church. While we praying. Gotcha. And gun about nine of y'all down. Or maybe I got to put my <coughs> knee on your neck while I'm fixing my glasses and choking you out. Or just lock up your children. It don't matter. It's going to be perpetuated. But he's the master of deception because he shows, he makes it seem like it ain't what you're thinking. It's your fault. It's your reason why you're not, you know, See, so we have to, and it, I'm not telling everybody go around hating white people or Edomites. That's not the message. We don't hate nobody. We hate sin. But do not be naive of what's actually going on and what's happening. See, and it's not an excuse for us not to thrive and to be successful and to be the absolute best that we can be because we can't all oh, because Esau I can't do anything. Please don't do that. It's the curses. The curses keep me from oh wowsy wowsy woo woo. The curses keep me from, you know, fulfilling my potential. We're gonna go over class with the curses too. It's gonna be long too. Hopefully, hopefully the cur the class of the curses breaks the curses. <laughs> no, the mind. Boy, it's real. Keep reading, brother. We almost done. <clears throat> in the first month, that is the month in the sun, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Pur, that is the lot, before Haman from day to day, and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is the month of Dar. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There are certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that, thou may, that they may be destroyed, and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver, silver to the hands of of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasury. So let me ask this question. Did he want them dead? Yes. yes. Paying top dollar to make sure that guess what? Uh, they're dead. Go ahead. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it into Haman, the son of Amalia the Agai, the Jew enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemed good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's uh, lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus, was it written and sealed with the king's ring? So the king just did it, right? Ignorantly, just, all right, go ahead and get rid of them. That comes out later. Go ahead. And the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women. And one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of dark, and to take spoil, to take the spoil of them for a prey. Mm -hmm. 
The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people that they should be ready against that day. Annihilate them. Go ahead. The post went out being hastened by the king's commandment and the decree was given in Shushan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was perplexed. Let's finish it here. Esther chapter 10. And the king Ahasuerus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea. And all the acts of his power and of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, whereunto the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai, the Jew, was next unto king Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his cities. Continue. Yehoda. Esther 10. <clears throat> this is the rest of, the rest of Esther. Uh, it says, Then Marochius said, God hath done these things. If I remember a dream, which I saw concerning these matters, and nothing thereof hath fell. A little fountain became a river, and there was light, and the sun and much water. This river is Esther, whom the king married and made queen. And the two dragons are I and Haman, or Ammon. And the nations were those that were assembled to destroy the name of the Jews. And my nation is this Israel which cried to God and were saved. But the Lord hath saved his people. And the Lord hath delivered us from all those evils. And God hath brought signs and great wonders which have not been done among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Therefore hath he made two lots, one for the people of God and another for all the Gentiles. And these two lots came at the hour and time and day of judgment before God among all nations. So God remembered his people and justified his inheritance. Therefore, those days shall be unto them in the month of dawn, the 14th and the 15th day of the same month, with an assembly and joy and with gladness before God, according to the generations forever among his people. Right. So we read that because that's it's a summary or an introduction to the rest of the editions of Esther. And God made Haman cast lots, but God made what? Two lots. Oh, yeah? You think that is going to go. You see, a lot of times people think it's going to go a certain way, but the Lord has already planned out the ending from the very beginning. Read, we'll finish with this verse. Proverbs 16. See, we don't control anything. Man thinks he's in control. If man is in control, that means what? There's no God. The God doesn't exist. See, we think we have free will. You can't have free will when somebody knows how it's going to end. See, we have a perception of it. The free will is for us to discover, not for God. He knows. So Proverbs sixteen thirty three. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. See how that goes with Esther? What does that mean? Most of the brothers in here should be raising their hands. I didn't hear the question. What does it mean? Proverbs 1633. We read Proverbs 1633. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Chew. 
The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Right? Meaning that it's before you. The lot is before you, but when it comes to that, to that lot, you ain't got no say so where it disperses and where it goes. The Lord does all the distribution to where wherever He wanted to go. Exactly. All you dice throwers in here, y'all can't. Brothers be throwing dice in Vegas all day, cause a lot is a lot. A, a, a lot is another word for what? Chance. Chance. Dice. When you go to everybody know, cause Vegas probably owe a bunch of y'all money. <laughs> when you throw them dice down. We have no control. Oh, how how it's gonna play out? How it's gonna hit? Even when we play cards. They what they call games of what? Chance. Chance. You don't know what's under that thing. Whoo, uh oh. Yeah. Can you pay for my flight home, brother? <laughs> <laughs> I had that happen. <laughs> that's a real, that's a true story. I ain't got no money to buy a cheeseburger, brother. <laughs> so Haman thought one thing. When he was cast, because it said from year to year, from month to month, from day to day, he thought, oh, you know what? We're going to get these cats. But the Lord said, okay, I got two lots for you. See, we thinking that we're in control. Haman thought he was in control. He put up, and we'll get into the hopefully Saturday, he put up gallows. Hang them up right there. There we go. Mm hmm. <laughs> and what happened? It was for his destruction. Yeah. Turn around and fit him in the butt. He ended up on a, on and, he, so he, he and his son. For himself. They don't even know you're preparing these gallows for your own demise. <laughs> you cast in lots for what? Your own demise. We have seen and experienced. The Lord is in control. <laughs> we don't want to sweat and bullet. He not. I got it. What do I do? Keep praying. What do I do now? Keep praying. It's already been determined. The way this thing is going to end is already written out. It's already played out. It's going to be determined. We just have to go through it. That's all. It's already finalized. Signed, sealed, and delivered. So we have nothing to worry about. Notice how Israel was in, they were perplexed, they were scared. But the Lord had already known that, and he, he had already, before this thing even went down, he was already moving the the, the chess pieces in place. Right. Esther didn't do that. She wasn't just placed there for the, no reason. Right. <laughs> See, Mordecai didn't just happen to hear that for no reason. What's going on? It's all playing out. But we don't discover it until we look back like, dang. The whole time the Lord was moving things. And I was crying and mad and you don't, and the Lord doing this thing. <laughs> See? So, you know, we know that they gave out gifts. If brothers and sisters want to give out gifts tonight or want to wait until Saturday. It's really up to you, you know. And like we said, this is not Christmas, so nobody gets anything or nobody has the money or the means to get anybody anything. The gifts is because of the feast. only reason why we can give gifts on this day is because of the actions of Mordecai and the role that a woman played. Like see, people don't like to talk about that. See, sisters are very, you know, integral. Integral, that's the word. Important in this ministry. People don't know that women were walking with Christ. Uh oh, from the beginning. So, give out gifts. That's fine. If you want to wait till Saturday, that's fine. Uh, I told everybody my gifts are on layaway. <laughs> I got the gifts, brothers and sisters. Thank you. 
next week, Lord one. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, it's a horrible. We have post office is terrible out here, but anyway. So, uh, Lord willing, hey, enjoy the rest of it. We got about a little bit more time. Let's break bread and then let's enjoy the feast. So, most high Christ bless you. Is all, is all the cups gone? We got, we got one more. Who, who hasn't got a cup? Me? Oh, we got one more? Oh, yeah. Man, was, see? Didn't need no math problem to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect count. All right. Ready on. Here we go. Heaven. Heavenly Father, we thank thee in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this wine and this bread that represents the body and blood of our Lord and Savior dying on the cross for the sins of Israel. In Christ's name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen.